Welcome friends, it's Miss Gisa. Summer's not over yet. I still am enjoying going to the beach with my family and I hope that you have gotten to go to the beach this summer. I just love Joanne Roach Evans books on marine life, seaweed, seashells uh, from the Northeast Coast. So today I'm going to read you another one of her stories. It's called Seashells, Treasures from the Northeast Coast. Do you guys like looking for seashells? I know I do. There is a special place where the land meets the sea. This special place is called the beach. The beach is a magical place. If you look down at your feet where the ocean has left the sand, there is no end to the treasures you might find. Along the sand and in among the rocks, there are marvelous seashells of every kind. Many of these shells were once homes for animals called mollusks. Mollusks are marine animals that have soft bodies. They make unique shells to protect themselves. There are many different kinds of shells because there are many different kinds of mollusks. Finding these shells is like going for a treasure hunt on the beach. Many of the shells you find belong to either a class of mollusks called gastropods that have one shell or a class of mollusks called bivalves that have two shells. One of the most beautiful shells of all belongs to the gastropod called the northern moon snail. It makes one spiral shell amazing. Two cousins of the northern moon snail are the slipper snail and the tortoise shell limpet. They both make one shell. Can you find the slipper snail's shell? Slipper snails are sometimes called boat snails. Can you find the tortoise shell limpet? Both the slipper snail and the tortoise shell limpet like to hang tightly onto rocks and sometimes onto each other so they are not washed away by the tide. Have you seen one of these? It is the little door of the northern moon snail. These doors are called operculum, Latin for little lid. Another mollusk that creates a spiral shell is the periwinkle. Periwinkles also hang on to rocks. About one inch long, periwinkles are smaller than northern moon snails. If you look on and around large rocks at the edge of the beach, you are sure to see many periwinkles. You might have to lift up some seaweed and look underneath too. If you find them on the sand, the shells are usually empty. Keep looking, you might find one with a snail in it, but please don't keep it, it will die. If you are lucky, you may discover some of the largest mollusk shells of all, the whelks. This is a knobbed whelk named for the knobs on its shoulder. The channeled whelk can grow to be seven inches long. The shells of the clam family are more common. They may be the first shells you find. The surf clam belongs to the class of mollusks called bivalves. They have two shells that are hinged together. Look at the large shell of the surf clam. See the lines on the shell? They are called growth lines. They tell the age of the clam. Each line represents one year. That reminds me of the growth rings on a tree trunk. There are many different types of clam shells. This beauty is a hard shelled clam called the Northern Quahog. This is a ribbed pod, also called an Atlantic razor clam. Soft-shelled clams are common, but the shells break easily. This long clam is called the Atlantic jackknife clam, also called a common razor clam. It can be 10 inches long. It may be longer than your foot. One of the smaller bivalves is the little jingle shell. These are called jingle shells because of the sound they make when they touch each other. Try holding them in your hand or in a cup and shake them to hear the jingle. You can string them on a cord and hang them in the wind. They are also called toenails. I 
think you can see why. Scallops also have two shells. Scallops are very common on Cape Cod's beaches in Massachusetts. They have beautiful, neatly patterned shells. The jingle shells and scallops come in all colors. See how many you can find in this picture. Common blue mussels are a bit larger and longer than scallops. They are often found clinging to rocks underwater. Sometimes they get washed up on shore. This mussel has seaweed attached to it. These are the craggy rough shells of the oyster. Inside the shells, it is smooth and shiny. Not all the shells you find on the beach are from mollusks. You may find the shell of a sand dollar. It is rare to find a whole one like this. The chalky shell is delicate and breaks very easily, so be very careful if you do find one. More often, you'll find broken bits like these. The sand dollar is closely related to the sea urchin. This is shown larger than actual size. They are usually about three inches across. You might even find a fish bone. Beautiful. Walk slowly and look carefully and you're sure to find something remarkable, your own treasure from the beach. And in the back are beautifully illustrated gastropods and bivalves. You can go on treasure hunts with Joanne if you check out her YouTube channel, especially if you don't live close to the ocean. I'll link her information below. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.